Hi and welcome to the new Adventure RC, the rebranding of Moe's RC. Today we're going to be looking at the Castle Field Programmer. So first off I need to undo my receiver box to, to gain access to the ESC control. So the cable ends are colour coded, so in this case yellow to yellow, uh, red to red, black to black etc. So that's in there. Once that's in there you need to hook up a battery, so once the battery is hooked up, switch it on and all the lights will come on. So on the controller then, on the top left hand side here you've got linked, it's flashing. Flashing just means it's talking correctly to the uh, ESC and if you look at the ESC you'll see that it's flashing green which means it's all, uh, it's all talking well. So on the, con on the actual control pad itself then it looks a little bit odd. So you've got one button only on the control pad which is at the bottom right down here and the rest of it you've got a number of, so your left hand side here are in the yellow boxes, that is the number of settings you can change on the card on the ESC. The lights across the top here is what setting you're currently at. So they sort of uh, work out as a sort of snake ladder sort of thing. Uh, right, so top left at the minute there, cut off voltage. Uh, that one's preset to auto LiPo, so when the LiPo gets to a, uh, an unsafe sort of level, it'll automatically cut off for one reason or another. I'll leave that on there. If you want to change these then, all you need to do is keep your finger on the button and you'll see that it changes the lights go across. Now once the light gets to a certain level that you like, you just let go and it's set. That, so that one's preset now. If you want to move to the next menu then you just press it once and you'll see it'll move down to auto cut off volt cell and that's currently what it's set at. So I've set my auto, voto, uh, my auto lipo cut off uh, for the cells uh, and cut off voltage both at auto lipo because I tend to use lipos more than uh, the 9 mh batteries. Next one then is drag brake. So drag brake, uh, if you're unsure what drag brake is, it's when you go off the throttle, off the uh, off the accelerator, off the power uh, on your controller. It'll automatically uh, synthesize a brake, as in uh, if you use if you've used brush motors before or you use a brush motor, it'll basically once you go off the power, there's a certain amount of brake in the motor to slow the vehicle down. So you can you can increase or decrease that with a brush uh, brushless motor. Um, I, I have it quite low, so at the minute here it's in double bars, so again if I press that, the double bars will change to how much drag brake I like uh, on the car. So for me doing a bit of crawling and a bit of sort of thrashing around on lanes and things, don't tend to use that much drag brake, but only a little bit just to hold it on when I'm going downhill etc without having to apply any uh, too much brake. So that's why I use it for. Um, the other reason if you use it in indoors, so indoor environments on race circuits, people tend to have a little bit more drag brake. So when you go into a corner, you just release the throttle and therefore the car would instantly slow down enough for the corners. And now obviously you can change that to how severe you'd like that brake. It's almost a bit like um, sort of ABS or traction control-ish. Next one then is brake strength. So when the brake drag brake comes on, how much uh, sorry, how much brake strength you have in your controller. So when you go to reverse brake or you press, uh, you go sort of forward on the controllers, how much brake you want, how severe you want that to, to happen. So I have that sort of quite medium. Uh, but again, it's personal preference if you're using crawling or using uh, using it for track racing, etc. These are in, you can see the, now they've changed from percentage there to a sort of uh, bar there, sort of um, a percentage bar to see where you are. And I sort of like it's a 40% Next one then is punch control. Punch control is a bit like traction control for how much initial punch it's going to push out of the uh, once you initially accelerate. So if you go full power, it won't give you. Uh, it'll give you sort of full power if you want it straight away. So if you know you want a slippery surface and you don't want to be slipping and sliding all over the place, you can decrease that, and it will sort of bleed the power in nice and gently, uh, as opposed to giving you 100% power if it's available. So it's a bit like traction control, but without it sensing what the conditions are, you have to sort of manually change that, which is what the card's for. So reverse type then, next one then, you've got three settings here, and you'll notice that the lights are double uh, double lit to show that you're in either one box or the other. So the first one is proportional reverse and lockout, proportion, and the second one is proportional without reverse, and forward to break and reverse. So. Proportional reverse lockout means it uses a lot of the settings on here and it's um, a reverse lockout so it reverses as you require it. Uh, proportional without reverse means you're just going forwards, you've got no reverse. It will let you put the motor into reverse so you'll just brake. And then forward to brake and reverse uh, is a far one there. 
Uh, next one then is motor type. So this is quite an interesting one. So the first one's in green that is highlighted and it also has a drop down for the bottom row here. So brushless or smart sense. So I've got a brushless motor, so mine is set for brushless at the minute. The next one is brushed reversing. So if you've got a uh, reversing two pole motor, that, sorry, reverse pole motor, so it'll go reverse, set to that there. Brushed high power, if you've got a really high power motor there, it will change the, uh, uh, change the criteria for it there to be in high power. And then sensor only, down to the, the sort of red section here. So sensor only is then works onto the uh, degrees at the bottom here. Uh, the other ones don't. So I have that just set to uh, brushless. Next one then is motor timing and cheat. So motor timing and cheat, it works in conjunction with two things. The first one, it works with uh, the sensor type on here, which I've said before, which is the degrees and degrees of the motor. So you have to make sure you're in the right one there. Uh, and the other one, uh, motor timing there works with the Mamba X, uh, the Castle Mamba ESC, which is the sort of top of the range ESC, not this sign winder. So that really won't do anything now. I can change it, but it really won't do anything. And then once you're happy, then once you've gone through all the settings, you can go to the top and you can keep cycling through. It's quite a little car, quite a good uh, car to take with you. You can reprogram certain elements to this uh, there through USB. Link that to the computer. Sadly, you can't link it to a MacBook. I've not tried yet, but uh, I don't have a Windows computer, but you can't link it to a MacBook to change all the uh, more parameters or update the card. It's a bit of a shame. But once you're done then, all you do is either is turn your, turn your ESC off, turn your system off, and then pull the cable out. But you can take that in your pocket everywhere you go, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching this video from Adventure RC. Please stay tuned, subscribe, and like our videos. We've got some great content coming.